A specter is haunting the globe, a specter made of silicon. For years, the world has been told an ironclad rule. The key to the future is held by a tiny few. To be specific, it's locked inside a machine made by the Dutch company ASML, a machine that costs nearly $200 million. This machine, the EUV lithography system, has been hailed as the pinnacle of human industrial achievement. But it is also something else. It is the sharpest, most lethal scalpel used by the United States to maintain its global technological hegemony. Wherever the scalpel points, the high-tech industry of that nation must endure the pain of a precision strike. Using its absolute control over the upstream semiconductor supply chain, Washington has not hesitated to turn commercial technology into a weapon of geopolitical war. Through policies like the CHIPS Act, it has coerced its own allies, from the Netherlands and Europe to Japan and South Korea and Asia, to enforce its export controls. The goal, to construct an impenetrable technological iron curtain, an explicit attempt to strangle the rise of any potential challenger and lock a nation of 1.4 billion people into the lower rungs of the global value chain forever. This is no longer free market competition. This is naked economic warfare. But history is always full of dramatic twists. Just as this Iron Curtain seemed to be closing shut, on August 1, 2025, a company in Hangzhou, China, Pulin Technologies, showed the world something astonishing. Your Iron Curtain has a crack in it. They successfully delivered China's first domestically produced semiconductor-grade nanoimprint lithography system, capable of sub-10 nanometer precision and built with fully independent intellectual property. The significance of this news goes far beyond a single new machine. It signals that the entire narrative of dominance, built on the monopoly of EUV, is beginning to fracture. To understand the disruptive nature of this breakthrough, we must first dissect the anatomy of the hegemonic system it challenges. It's a meticulously constructed pyramid of control. At the very top sits ASML's EUV machine. But the body and foundation of the pyramid are controlled by a vast network, led by the United States. The essential design software, EDA, which is like the very language and grammar of chip creation, is dominated by three American giants, Synopsys, Cadence, and Mentor Graphics. The foundational architecture for nearly all mobile chips, the genetic code of our digital lives, comes from ARM, a British company, but one whose technology is still subject to the long arm of US export control laws. The titans of manufacturing equipment, the companies that build the means of production, like Applied Materials and LAM Research, are also American. The essence of this system is to funnel the world's talent and resources into a closed loop that America controls. Allies are permitted to participate, to share in the prosperity, but only on the condition of absolute political and strategic alignment. The moment a nation is deemed a threat, the system can sever all of its supplies. It is a modern form of technological colonialism, forcing every player worldwide to choose between subservient cooperation and punitive isolation. And that is precisely why nanoimprint lithography, or NIL, has always been a heretical idea. If the EUV system is a nobleman dancing at a lavish ball of capital, NIL is a blue-collar revolutionary with a hammer in hand. Its principle is brutally simple. It replicates circuits like a printing press. You first create a nanoscale stamp, called a template. You coat a silicon wafer with a special light-sensitive liquid. You press the stamp onto it with perfect precision, flash it with UV light to cure the liquid, and lift it off. A flawless nanometer scale pattern is born. This elegant simplicity is more than a technical advantage. It is a profound strategic counter move. It is a form of asymmetric balancing. American hegemony relies on overwhelming its opponents with staggering complexity and capital costs, the multi-hundred billion dollar semiconductor game. It forces others to play a game they are designed to lose. NIL refuses to play that game. It changes the rules. It's the strategic equivalent of responding to a billion-dollar battleship not by building your own, but by inventing the torpedo. By bypassing the brutally complex system of mirrors and the outrageously expensive light source required for EUV, it attacks the hegemonic system at its two weakest points. First, it democratizes the technology by slashing costs. When chip manufacturing is no longer a game only a few nations can afford to play, the monopoly, which relies on impossibly high barriers to entry, begins to erode. Second, and more importantly, it makes true independence possible. 
The foundation of the hegemonic system is specialization and dependency. They allow you to design, but not to manufacture. They allow you to manufacture, but deny you the most advanced tools. Nil's more straightforward technological path makes it possible for a determined challenger to rebuild the entire technology stack themselves inside a relatively closed loop. This brings us to the human story at the heart of this geopolitical shift, a story of how the empire's own paranoia forges the weapons of its challengers. The inventor of Nil technology was Professor Stephen Y. Cho, a Chinese-American scientist at Princeton University. The man who has now industrialized it is his former student, Professor Gu Haixiong. Two decades ago, Professor Gu chose to return to China. This was more than a personal choice. It was a symptom of a geopolitical trend, the reverse brain drain triggered by the hegemon's own anxieties. In the wake of discriminatory policies like the now renamed but still influential China Initiative, which cast a cloud of suspicion over an entire generation of scientists of Chinese descent, the United States is no longer seen as a universal land of opportunity, but as a landscape of political risk. By creating a hostile environment for the world's brightest minds, America is actively fueling the rise of its competitors. It is a strategic own goal of epic proportions. Upon his return, Professor Ji's team demonstrated the only effective response to technological strangulation, quiet, hard, painstaking work. They didn't just copy a machine. They knew that under the thumb of a hegemon, any reliance on an outside source could become a noose tomorrow. Therefore, while developing their lithography system, they simultaneously developed nearly 30 different types of proprietary nanoimprint materials to go with it. This was a declaration of technological sovereignty. When your equipment, your materials, and your processes are all in your own hands, you have built your own safe zone. The opponent's export controls and blockades become meaningless pieces of paper. This approach, building a self-sufficient ecosystem from the ground up, is the most profound rejection of the colonial-style division of labor that says, we will provide the standards, you will be responsible for assembly. So, what does this machine from China mean for the rest of the world? For the developing world, the nations of the global south, it lights a lamp of hope. For decades, these nations have been locked into the low end of the global value chain, staring up at insurmountable technological walls. NIL offers them a potential path to enter specialized fields of semiconductor manufacturing without the crippling capital investment required by the Western model. It's a key that could unlock a new wave of industrialization. For America's own allies in Europe and Asia, the implications are just as profound. These nations, while inside the system, feel the constant pressure of a demanding hegemon. The Dutch government, forced by Washington to restrict its own champion company, ASML, from exporting freely, suffered a direct violation of its national sovereignty. A more diverse technological landscape with real competition would grant them greater strategic autonomy and bargaining power, freeing them from having to constantly look over their shoulder for approval from one country. And for consumers everywhere, breaking a monopoly ultimately means lower prices and faster innovation. When the ticket to the chip-making game is no longer so expensive, more competitors will flood into fields like memory, displays, and photonic computing. The ultimate beneficiary will be every single person who uses a piece of technology. We must be clear-eyed. This single machine will not topple the entire semiconductor industry overnight. In the realm of the most complex logic chips for CPUs, EUV still holds a distinct advantage. But this machine is a wedge, driven precisely into the wall of the hegemonic system. It is proof of concept. It is the definitive signal that the technological unipolar moment is over. The cracks it has created will only widen over time. The fracturing of the global tech landscape is no longer a future possibility. It is an ongoing, irreversible process. The dream of a single, universal, American-led technological standard is dead. What is being challenged here is not just American dominance, but the entire winner-take-all, zero-sum mindset of the Cold War that underpins it. This machine from Hangzhou has proven that when one road is blocked by a bully, another, more creative path, one that represents the interests of the many, will inevitably be forged by brave pioneers. The question for the rest of the world is no longer if an alternative exists, but how to navigate a new reality of competing technological ecosystems. The age of a single, undisputed ruler is over, and a new, more complex world is being born.